Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for, oh, to everyone who has been watching the channel so far and liking and subscribing and yeah, and commenting. It's great to see um, people taking interest in what we're doing. So yeah, big thank you really. Um, for anyone else who, if you do like our videos and if you haven't already done so, please don't forget to click the like hit subscribe and click the little bell and then you'll be notified of when we post our videos which will be every Wednesday and Sunday at six o'clock. So that'd be great, thank you. So anyway, back to today's video. We are, the plan is to um, every, at the end of every month, I know we're now into February, but we will try and do a recap of the month of the farm and just show you what's gone on over the course of the month and all the different crops dash things we've been doing. So that is the plan for today's video. We will just go through a brief recap of all the different things that have been going on and provide you with an update. So I'll, you'll just see some clips that we've filmed over the course of the month and yeah, I'll give you a quick update on what we've done. First up in the month, we were planting our coatees. This is Joseph going up on the harrows with a hydraulic driven winch, leveling the plough ground off. And that's my poor dad, still doing one of the hardest jobs, opening up the rows for the potatoes to be planted in. See, there's no need for gym memberships at Master Farms. Just come every January and you'll have a tough stint that day on the Coty. So this banking frame is opening up the ridges for the potatoes to be planted into. And each row is um, 16 inches apart. This is the guys planting them. So here we are now back in the same field where we just saw the clips of us planting, just from the other angle. Um, this is us, so the field now you can see has been covered with a polythene. Um, it's all got little holes in to let the uh, air and a bit of moisture in. And yeah, really pleased, they are growing well. Um, all about the size of your hand, I suppose, or the palm, palm of your hand. Um, but this now becomes a really critical time for them. Um, it is a big risk growing them as early as we do, but we do it to try and make sure that we get the uh, potatoes into the market, into the UK, before anybody does, or any, any growers from the UK get them into the shops. Um, but we know we're pushing our luck. There's a high chance that we can get cold weather and ground frost, which would then cause the potatoes to freeze and actually die. So we are now keeping a constant check on the weather forecast and we make sure that if ever we see the temperature is going to drop below zero and there's a chance of ground frost, we can actually cover them with another protection. So we can use something called fleece and this just gives them the added benefit, basically like a big blanket and hopefully keep them from freezing. Fingers crossed in another few weeks at the end of the month, we will have some pictures to show you of the, co the uh, covers taken off. We've also then moved on from the coatees and the early steep slopes. We are now busy planting on the flatter fields using the tractor machinery. As you can see here, this is the John Deere 6145R with the GPS system fitted, um, powering, which is leveling off the ground after it's been ploughed, opening up the ridges, and then the guys come along, as we're gonna see in a minute, and then plant the potatoes by hand. So this is the plant, this is the guys planted by hand on the flatter fields. They, we're so lucky, we've got such a great team. They all work really hard and um, I say we'd be lost without them. So big thanks to them all for all their hard work they do for us. Um, but as well as all the planting, we've also been, say, covering a polythene behind. So as soon as, as soon as we've covered or planted the fields, we then cover the polythene to help warm the soil up and protect them from any for, um, future frosts. And then we've also been finishing off 
uh, standing, so that's the sizing and sorting of our seed potatoes, ready for them to be planted in March. So moving on to the cauliflowers, um, these are winter cauliflowers as you can see here. For those that don't know, we grow um, a number of different varieties of winter cauliflower, aiming that we start cutting at the end of October and then we cut in hopefully succession right through until the end of April, sometimes even the first week of May. It's been a very challenging year for the winter cauliflower. Um, they have just, I don't know, we can't really work it out, but we think a combination of the milder start to the autumn, followed by the high winds and the storms we had, and then the amount of rain that we fell in November and December, they just couldn't really cope with it all. Finally now, as you can see here, we are starting to get better head formation and like this one here this is ready to be picked um, next week and in the last few weeks we've finally seen better better picks um, so the start of the month kind of started off as December ended very poor numbers couldn't really keep up with demand but finally as you can see here these have all been picked this week um, we, we were getting back to numbers and we're managing to uh, hopefully put them back on or supplying all the customers we should be so fingers crossed this uh, carries on for the for the rest of the season so on to daffodils um, so we grow a very small area of daffodils um, just enough to do um, the local market this is a field here in a bit of a valley they've been down for god knows how long now years so don't get the most off it but still gives us a supply um, I say we do all that at the local local shops um, so they're just currently in this field at the moment um, and we actually pick a daffodil before the before the head opens so you'll be picking this and then we put it bunch them up and then they go into the shops like this and then when you buy them take them home and they'll flower flower in your kitchen or your lounge wherever you put them um, so see that one there that's actually going to be really that's going a tiny bit too far we don't want to be picking that um, so yeah daft slowly but uh, steadily picking them it's just always hard to keep up at this time when it stays dry for a little while um, and we're trying to plant plus cover the polythene it's always tricky and also picking collies um, to fit everything in so finally on to our cows so we've done a little bit, done a couple of videos so far on the cows, but these are our Jersey or pedigree Jersey dairy cows. Um, the milking herd, they're all currently housed for the winter months. Go into a lot more detail, but basically it's due to the fact during the winter months, the grass does not grow quick enough for our cows to be able to get enough food to eat outside. And it will also just be too wet and muddy for them to be in the fields all the time. So we put them in there in these cubicle sheds. Um, they've each got individual mattresses and also um, get fed all their diet, all their mixes, all made up for them to specifically what they need. And they're always uh, happy as Larry in here. As so I'll do some videos of detailing what we do, why we do it, and explaining all the process in the coming months. But we also have the monthly milk recording process, which you all saw on the video as well. And then also just all the general tasks that go with looking after the cows and looking after the young stock. So thanks again for watching. I hope you've all found the January recap to be of interest. It's given you a brief uh, kind of summary of what we've been up to this month on the farm. Um, so the plan is to keep doing them. So next one will be probably, well, it will cover February, but you're likely to be the first weekend in March. So until then, we will pray for some nice dry weather and no cold nights and see you all on Wednesday for our next video. Thanks for watching.